Hi guys and welcome back. Today is a very amazing video for me. It is the first one since I got accepted into the YouTube Artist Collective and if any of you don't actually know what that is, it is basically just a group of YouTube artists as the name implies. They get together and draw and illustrate a theme that's being voted on over at Facebook by pretty much everyone. So if you want to take part in that and be able to vote for the next theme, you can, and I'll have a link down in the description to the Facebook page. And from there, you're able to see all the other entries and all the other artists that are in this collective. And it's just so amazing to see how so many different artists interpret the same theme. It's amazing all the different concepts that people are able to come up with. So that is one of my favorite things about this. And I was very lucky to be able to join on a month that I am super inspired by the theme. This might be one of my favorite themes that they've ever done. And the theme itself is actually spirit animals, focusing on endangered and extinct animals. And the animal that I chose is the tiger. And I cannot express how much I love tigers. They are probably my all time favorite animal ever. And I actually love a lot of animals, but I was really glad that I was able to do a piece that is inspired by tigers and the connection between tigers and humans. The thing is, is that there's just, there have been really negative impacts on tigers because of people, but there's also been very positive ones, especially lately in the preservation of many of the tiger species. So I will definitely be talking a little bit more on the endangerment of tigers and some of the things that we can do to help, but I'll also be balancing that out a little bit in this video with some painting advice and what I did for this piece. So we can kind of talk about both tigers and art, two of my great loves in life. And I will have links to all of the tools that I'm using down in the description. So if you're curious about anything, you can find it down there. But for the line work part, I am using my trusty Micron pens and I'm working on cold press paper. And the big problem with using Micron pens on cold press paper is cold press paper is very textured and the Micron pens when going over that texture, it dries the nib out really fast. So I find it really helpful to have two pens that I can use concurrently. So as one starts to dry out, I can just put the cap back on, let it sit and saturate for a little bit and then pop out another pen so that I can keep working and I just cycle through them like that. And that really helps. And I do find that when I'm working on cold press with these Micron pens, I have to dig in a lot more to get it to fill in all those cracks. So it's definitely not the optimum situation for hand comfort, but in the end, I. I definitely prefer the control of the Micron pens over some of the other options. And that is definitely what I wanted for this one. I wanted a lot of fine detail. And since I had two larger figures that were small and compact, I'd have to get a lot of detail in a small amount of space. So I knew that the Micron pens were the right choice for me for this. And inking the tiger was a really fun challenge because I wanted to make sure that the areas that are fluffier on a tiger represented that, but I also didn't want the texture of the fur to get completely out of control and take that away from me. So the way that I broke down the tiger is that a lot of the areas of a tiger has very sleek fur. And in those areas, I went with a solid line and I was focused on the shape. And then in areas where it's fluffier, like right under the neck, around the ears, around the cheeks, that is where I let myself put a little bit of a fur texture where I just added a few little flicks that looked a little bit like the ends of hair. And by being very conservative with areas like that, it keeps the shape of the tiger very solid. So it doesn't get so that the texture is the controlling factor of it. I am completely in control of how this tiger ends up looking. And that's how I prefer it when it comes to drawing in textures is to break it down so that I know exactly where I'm putting it and why I'm putting it there. And then in some areas where it's less necessary, I will pull it back into more of a solid line. And in the stripes of the tiger, this is a little bit of an example of that. I made sure that it was a little bit more concentrated in areas where it wasn't as fluffy. So around on the back and some parts of the head, I made it much more of a solid line and then areas around the chest where it starts breaking up and fluffing up. I drew those individual strokes a little bit more spread out so that it shows that the fur is fluffing and breaking apart like that. And again, I, I will say this every single time, 
uh, look at reference. I looked at so much reference while I was working on this, while I was sketching it out and while I was painting it to make sure that I got the placement of everything correct. So I was looking at reference as I was doing these stripes to make sure that I got the spirit of how they wanted to look so that I could reflect that in the final version. And after I finished the line work, I went right in with my misket or liquid frisket, depending on the brand that you get. And that's this orange stuff that I'm painting down. And basically it's just latex that will expel the paint so that it won't get on that area. And I put that down around the edge. That way I can do multiple washes for the background to build it up to that final version that I want without needing to painstakingly paint around all of those edges. This creates a much smoother blend and a gradient. So if you have large areas like this that you're going to do multiple layers on and it has a very intricate edge, I highly recommend getting a bottle of misket because it is a lifesaver. And when I was figuring out the color palette that I wanted to use for this one, the one pivotal thing that could tip it either way and that I was building the entire color palette on was actually the color of the tiger. So I was deciding at the beginning whether I wanted to do a traditional orange tiger or if I wanted to do a white tiger. And interesting fact, white tigers can be almost any breed of tigers. It's actually a genetic defect that keeps them from producing the orange pigment. So the, actually the most common type of white tiger is a Bengal tiger. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I was doing a little bit of research on that to make sure that I wasn't about to put a white tiger in an environment that white tigers do not actually exist. So I did make sure I checked that out. But in the end, I did decide to go with a more traditional orange tiger. I decided that I did want all those pops of color. I wanted this piece to be very saturated and I knew that this orange would really pop off the background in a really gorgeous way and I did do a lot of color comps to get to the final decision of going that direction and then I also wanted for the girl to mimic that color a little bit. I wanted her hair to be dark like the stripes of a tiger and I wanted her skin to be a little bit more orange based in tone so that she had a similar connection with the tiger. And most of what is in this foreground is much warmer than the background and that really helps it pop forward. And I could not wait to get to the point where I could paint this tiger. I love having new challenges to paint and I do not do a lot of animals and I definitely don't do a lot of tigers in my artwork. So this was a new challenge and it meant that I was really studying it and being very thoughtful with my approach. And I had a lot of reference that I was looking at on my phone to make sure that I got the colors correct and the placement of those colors correct. And I love having challenges like that, new things to figure out and to work around. It's just a lot more engaging for me than a lot of the same. So for this one, I very much wanted to build up the color of the tiger through glazing. And glazing is just where you get to the final result by adding layer after layer that eventually blend together to that color. So for example, instead of going right in and mixing a purple and painting purple, you can go in there and do a pink layer and then let it dry and then do a blue layer and let it dry. And when you do that, you have a lot more depth to the colors and you can see the, how those different layers have a lot of richness to the color and it really does add a lot of vibrance to it. And for the tiger, I started off with just a yellow color and I put it in, blocking it in where the color on the tiger is mostly. There are a lot of white areas on tigers, specifically in the interior center area. So the stomach of the tiger and the inside of their paws, as well as under their chin. And this one had a little bit above the eyes as well. So I was paying special attention to where I was putting the yellow to begin with, because from there on out, I would be building up around that for the colors. And after that first yellow layer dried, I just went and added a touch of cadmium red to each layer and after that dried I added just a little bit more and another layer and that creates a much more dynamic and rich looking color rather than just going straight in with an orange. So that's a quick tip if you want to get more depth and richness into your watercolor pieces is use glazing and every once in a while you'll see me pulling out a green tool and what that is is actually just an embossing gun that I got at my local craft store and this is an amazing tool for watercolors. If you don't have some sort of heat tool or hair dryer that you're using, 
you're missing out. Cause seriously, when there are times where I can't use it and I have to do a watercolor piece, it takes so much more time. And I definitely prefer the instant gratification of being able to work on the next layer. And it's also great to make sure that everything is bone dry before I move on and paint something near it in case it will bleed instantly. So this tool is one of my most used watercolor tools that I have. So I highly recommend it. And honestly, I think that the branches are one of my favorite things that I painted specifically in the color choice. And the reason for that is that I've been trying really hard lately to be a little bit more subtle and conscious with the choices that I'm making for colors rather than going in with like an orange. I'm trying to think a little bit more in depth with what I can show with it. So for these branches, I definitely wanted them warmer than the background so that it would match the forefront warmth. But I also definitely wanted it cooler than the characters so that it would be kind of a middle read where the characters themselves would come first because they are warm and they stand out from the rest of the piece. And then the branches come out a little bit further from the background. And I actually am really happy with how they turned out and with the color choices. So one thing that's really helpful for when you're doing watercolors like this or almost any traditional medium is to get a very harmonious look throughout the piece, you can mix together the same colors that you've already been using and turn them into colors elsewhere in the piece. That's what, That way it mimics that same look from one point to another. So these branches really just came about from mixing several of the colors that I had already used until I got to a point that it was kind of this ashy, gray greenish color and I tested it out and I loved how it looked so I just built it up from there and eventually I started adding a little bit of turquoise to the underside of the branch which is the color that I used at the bottom of the background so that had that bouncing off light effect to it so it looked like it was casting that shadow and having that same color as the bottom really helped ground it out into this piece. And the number of tigers have fallen 95% in the last 100 years, and they now survive on 40% less land than they did even just a decade ago. And it's kind of shocking how fast these really horrible changes are happening and how quickly these tigers are being pushed to the point of extinction. And it's really very heartbreaking to know that a lot of that is because of people and because of these choices that are being made. And I know that there's not a lot that each individual can do, but if we can donate even just a little bit to a good cause that will put it towards preservation of tigers, that would make a big difference. And in the selling of this artwork, I will be donating $55 towards Panthera. And this is a really interesting group. It's a group of scientists that have come together to preserve endangered big cats. And they specifically have a Tigers Forever program, which is focusing on protecting tiger habitats and protecting tigers from poachers, which is a great way to start building up the tiger population in the wild. So this one in particular was definitely the one that I wanted to donate to. But if you guys, if any of you want to be able to donate or to help, I highly suggest you do some research and look into all the different organizations. There's a lot of amazing ones out there that do a lot of good. So you can find one that really works with you and gets you excited about donating and helping. And that is pretty much it for today's video. I am just very glad that I got to join this amazing YouTube Artist Collective, especially in time for such an inspiring theme. But as I mentioned, I will be selling the original and part of the proceeds will go to Panthera for the tigers. So if you want to support tigers and me, you can purchase this original at my shop. And I also will have prints of this one as well. So if you wanted to look at my shop, I'll have a link in my end card that'll about to happen as well as down in the description. And I post every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you are, and you haven't hit that bell yet, also do that. So you can get notifications on when I post and that is it. So I will see you guys at my next video.